the crisp is a pilsner this is they have weird descriptions of their beer on the can and most of the time they don't actually tell you anything about the beer itself so i'm going to read this in as dramatic a tone as i can we were 60 feet underground when the beer came calling while sinking tankards in ancient beer caves near the foot of the alps inspiration struck and at that exact moment the crisp was born the can in your hand turns obsession to reality now that's crisp uh, i think they were at some sort of tasting in beer caves near the alps so like maybe switzerland or is belgium near the alps fuck i don't know um and and so while they were tasting the the pilsner they were like god damn that's good pilsner let's go ahead and try making that something like that ourselves uh, this is made by Six Point Brewery, and it's not particularly talkative. Oh, it is talkative. Look at that. It's, it's coming right up at us. It's coming for you. Uh, the crisp, and this is a new part of my beer reviews. I'm doing this from now on. The crisp pours out sudsy. Ooh, there is a an acrid edge to that as it effervesces up towards my nasal passages <laughs> this has a well it's not it's not a good association i'm afraid um for years and years and years americans have been making uh american pilsners for mass distribution uh, uh budweiser bush uh, uh coors light uh those sorts of beverages are they're they're all basically american pilsners and there's a certain sweet, bitter interplay, almost like um, almost like wet wheat, that uh, it, it plagues those beers, and and those beers are usually mediocrities, and and well, what can you expect? It's what you're looking at, and, and I actually had my dad toured a factory one time. What you're looking at is basically. 20 swimming pools full of beer all interconnected by piping and then being pushed through that in an endless cycle in order to make sure that one particle of beer tastes exactly like the next particle of beer all the way through the system that way when you bottle it and send it out to the world every bottle tastes exactly like every other bottle the problem is it's bland as fuck and uh, it all has that that color and that level of foam and that specific smell that comes off the top of it. And so a negative association was formed in my mind with Pilsners over the years because I'm so very bored of American Pilsner. But then I tried European Pilsners and I tried craft brewery Pilsners and I found that that is an entirely different animal that's full of flavor, depth, and complexity. So, let's give her a taste. Now, um, there is a, a thing on this that I, I call it, it does have a hint of the piss about it, which is to say that there's a, there's a, an astringent, high-pitched note yellowy kind of it kind of tastes like it looks but you've got to dive into the piss and you, <laughs> you've got to go past that um this is a, a, a kind of like a like a heineken or a stella artois um it's it's not i know nobody wants to dive into the piss and i'm i'm right there with you but stick with me because uh it's the after notes that make it worth it that's where you start getting the the um there's a little bit of a toasted quality to it there's a hint of caraway perhaps um maybe sesame there's there's grains in there it's not just a glass of piss it's 
um, it's a glass of grains filtered through water, filtered through grains, uh, and and there's there's a complexity. There's there's maybe rolled a little bit of rolled oats in there. There's hay. There's grass. This is this is food for for sheep and goats. Uh, it's it's not. It's not bad. It's like I said when you, when I say that there's a hint of the piss. I don't mean that it's it's um. What I mean is that it bears an ever so slight resemblance to those beers, those light beers that Americans drink by the bullfall. Um, but but that there's there's more happening in this one. It's it's still not entirely to my liking. If I'm being honest, this is not my favorite beer. Uh, it's it's not my favorite beer by six point. And it's probably not my favorite. It's not my least favorite beer I've tried this year, but it's. I would say it's not. It's not up there either. This is a middle of the road at best. Uh, as far as pilsners go, this is a great drink if you are really, really hot. This is hydrating. And refreshing. It's wet on the tongue, and then oddly enough, there's a dryness that follows it um, that makes you want more. Then you go, oh damn, got that kind of parchment, and you put more in you. And that's, I think that's the the trick of the pilsner. Um, but I gotta say, as far as my my first. My first six point review goes uh, on, on on face cam again. Uh, this is not this is not the best one, not the best one I could have done. It's a, a little little dull. Still, grassy, uh, uh, grainy, and uh, refreshing. Absolutely refreshing. It's okay. Um, these aren't uh, these aren't first time reactions, as you can see when I when I pulled the beers out of that uh, box. I've tried at least one of each of these beers uh, at this point, and um, they are I've I've already formed my opinions. I've already decided which ones I like, uh, and that this one is it just happens to be the it's the least exciting one in the pack. There are some absolute quality beers in that pack. And I'm not drinking them uh, until I, I'm, I'm not drinking the last of them anyway until I drink them on this stream because I will do a review of, of each and every last one. This is one of five, um, but this is their this is their sort of light entry. Uh, there's uh, some some very very good ones in there, including the Trail Haze, which I I think I may have done on audio only. I don't I don't think I have the video hooked up for that one, but the Trail Haze is very good. Uh, the resin, interesting. The Bengali, uh, surprisingly good. And then Hootie. The, there's something about ha hazy IPAs right now that's America's going nuts for hazy IPAs. Uh, if you go into a Wegmans or you go into a Tops and you look in their beer section, you're going to find just about every brewery that they sell is doing a hazy IPA right now. Uh, a couple of years ago is when IPAs really took off here in the states, or at least in the northeastern United States. Uh, I bet they were out west. They're probably probably bigger, like Seattle, Washington, that kind of place, um, Portland, Oregon. I bet they were doing them out there for a while. But up here at the northeast, IPAs were kind of, you know, it was it was a new class. Let's say over the last decade. Now everybody's into hazies, and I can't say as I blame them because hazies bring to bear two of my favorite aspects of beer. If you go for an IPA and you want something hoppy, uh, there's usually, that's one extreme. It's very dry, very hoppy, very floral over here. And then over here, what you get is like malty, rich, uh, dark. And when you do hazy uh, IPAs, you wind up with, there's just a touch of that malt in there that gives it a little zing on the tongue uh, that really fucking jives for me. Uh, it's one of my favorites that's going on right now. My my favorite beer class of all time, at least right now, is the Scottish Wee Heavy. A Wee Heavy is uh, is just fine by me. Um, 
I think my favorite beer going right now is Orkney Skull Splitter. Haven't had it in a while, but I would uh, I would gladly take one. <laughs> I'll look into that. I'll see where I can buy one. But yeah, that's that's the crisp. <laughs> 